there unmaskers welcome to my channel unmask it now thanks for tuning in today today's episode is everything you need to know about aws systems manager or ssm agent so let's dive right in in today's video we'll discuss the aws ssm agent and aws ssm service the prerequisites for a managed node the architecture and capabilities that the service has to offer the different service endpoints required by the agent to communicate with the SSM service. And lastly, we'll explore the different network connectivity options for configuring SSM agent on machines that are in different environments. SSM agent, which is short for AWS Systems Manager agent, is an Amazon software that enables remote management on any node. These nodes can be Amazon EC2 instances on your AWS account. They can be on-premises servers or virtual machines, or it can be a server that is hosted on any other cloud provider. Most recently, SSM Agent also supports Edge devices through the AWS service, which is the AWS IoT Greengrass. It also supports other AWS IoT devices and non-AWS IoT devices as well. When it comes to supported operating systems, AWS SSM Agent works with Windows Server, Linux, Mac OS, and Raspberry Pi. If you are interested in knowing if a specific version of these operating systems is supported, then I recommend checking the AWS public documentation. On Windows, SSM Agent runs as a Windows service under the system, which is the NT Authority system context, and on Linux, it runs in the context of a default root user. The AWS Systems Manager Agent source code is open source and is available on GitHub and is written in the Go language. I will make sure to add all the hyperlinks on this page in the description below so you can refer to it later. Coming to the availability of the SSM Agent, some Amazon machine images come pre-installed with SSM Agent. A complete list of what AMIs come pre-installed with SSM Agent can be found in the AWS public documentation. I will make sure to link that below for your reference. Particularly for Windows, Windows Server 2008 to Windows Server 2012 R2 AMIs published in November 2016 or later, and Windows Server 2016 to 2022 AMIs come pre-installed with the latest SSM Agent version at the time of their publication. For all other AMIs, on-premises servers and VMs, other cloud servers and edge devices, including AWS IoT Greengrass core devices, SSM agent must be installed manually. There are a set of prerequisites that need to be followed on every machine that you want to use with AWS Systems Manager. These prerequisites differ based on the environment in which the machine resides in. This can be a machine on the AWS environment, or outside of AWS, which we refer to as the hybrid environment. When a machine that has SSM agent installed is fully configured with the above environmental specific prerequisites, then that machine is now referred to as a managed node. Let's take a look at some of these prerequisites. First, let's start with the basic prerequisites. Any machine either on the AWS or the hybrid environment needs to have a new or existing AWS account you need to verify that the SSM service is available in the desired region of use. Verify that your machine runs on a supported operating system for SSM agent and that the SSM agent can be installed on that machine. And finally, you need to ensure that you have a connectivity to the SSM service endpoints from that machine. When it comes to the supported devices on the AWS environment, we only support Amazon EC2 as well as AWS IoT Greengrass Core Edge devices. A machine in the hybrid environment is any server that is on-premises on other clouds or other edge devices. When it comes to permissions, in the AWS environment, we require an IAM instance profile to be used with EC2 and an IAM role to be used with AWS IoT Greengrass Core Edge devices with necessary permissions for SSM. For machines in the hybrid environment, you need to use an IAM role with the necessary permissions for SSM. For TLS certificate, this comes installed by default for any device on the AWS environment, but for hybrid environments, you need to make sure that the TLS certificate is installed explicitly on that device. 
For the registration process, for a machine in the AWS environment, it is quite simple and straightforward. All you need to do is attach an IAM instance profile for EC2 instances and an IAM role for AWS IoT Greengrass core devices. For a machine in the hybrid environment, the agent needs to be configured using hybrid activation. Last but not the least, for machines in the AWS environment, particularly for EC2 instances, it requires access to the instance metadata in order to communicate with the SSM service. And for machines in the hybrid environment, there is no such requirement. Let's take a look at how we can identify a managed node on the AWS console. On the AWS Systems Manager console, the IDs of your hybrid managed nodes can be distinguished from Amazon EC2 instances with the prefix mi hyphen. Amazon EC2 instance IDs use the prefix i hyphen. Previously, managed nodes were all referred to as managed instances. The term managed instance refers to managed nodes which are EC2 instances only. Since we can have managed nodes that can be EC2 instances as well as other machines outside of AWS, the term managed node is now used to avoid that ambiguity instead of using managed instances. Let's now talk about the AWS Systems Manager or SSM service. The AWS Systems Manager service is the server component in this client-server architecture and is a publicly accessible service in the AWS cloud. It was formerly known as Amazon Simple Systems Manager Service or Amazon EC2 Systems Manager Service. However, the original abbreviation SSM still continues to stick around and is reflected in various AWS services, including a few of the other AWS services console. So far, we've discussed that SSM agent can be installed not only on servers in the AWS environment, but also on machines outside of the AWS environment, as can be seen in the diagram. Once these machines have been configured as a managed node, the SSM agent makes it possible for the systems manager service to update, manage, and configure these machines. The agent processes requests from the systems manager service in the AWS cloud and then runs them as specified in the request. It is the SSM agent that initiates all connections to the systems manager service in the AWS cloud. For this reason, it is only required to allow outbound connection on TCP port 443 from the agent to the service. There is no requirement to allow any inbound connection to the managed node from the SSM service. The SSM service listens on three endpoints which are publicly accessible. So if you have a firewall in the path between the agent and the service communication, make sure to whitelist these URLs as seen in the diagram. SSM service offers a number of capabilities to perform actions on managed nodes, other applications or resources. To the right, you can see a snippet from the SSM console that lists the SSM capabilities and how they are categorized for ease of use based on their functionality. This helps as one can choose to work with some of the capabilities or all of them based on their business needs. For the scope of this video, I won't be diving into the specifics of each one of these capabilities. However, I will leave you with an important note that not all these capabilities require the SSM agent or a managed node. For example, if the target of your action is a managed node, then SSM agent on that managed node performs the action. However, for other types of resources, the systems manager service performs the desired action or communicates with other services to perform that action on your behalf. To better understand this, let me provide an example. All capabilities under node management would be run against a managed node and will be processed by the SSM agent. Whereas a capability like parameter store or app config for that matter has no dependency on a managed node and won't be processed by any SSM agent. In fact, it is the SSM service on the cloud that will action this particular capability. There are three service endpoints that SSM service in AWS cloud is configured to listen and respond to API requests. The first one is the Amazon Systems Manager service endpoint, which has the service prefix SSM. It is the primary service endpoint that is responsible for reporting the agent health checks and is also the entry point when you want to work with any of the systems manager capabilities. The next one is the Amazon message delivery endpoint. 
This has a service prefix EC2 messages. This endpoint is responsible for executing run command documents when run on managed node. It delivers messages and receives responses for the tasks executed by the agent. Finally, the Amazon Session Manager Message Gateway Service Endpoint, which has the prefix as SSM messages, is an additional endpoint that is required when the managed nodes want to use the Session Manager capability. This endpoint is not used for any of the other capabilities, so if you do not require Session Manager capability, you do not require communication to this endpoint. Since SSM is a regional service, SSM agent can only communicate with the endpoints specific to that region. Hence, the region will need to be replaced by the AWS region code in the endpoint URLs as can be seen in the table. For example, US East 1 is the region code for North Virginia. So the primary SSM endpoint URL for that region will be ssm.useast1.amazonaws.com. Let's take a look at the different network connectivity options for SSM agent when operating in different environments. If your managed node is an EC2 instance in a public subnet, the SSM agent on that instance communicates with the public SSM service endpoints over the internet via the internet gateway, whose route is defined in its subnet route table. Hybrid managed nodes that are outside of AWS can also communicate with the publicly accessible SSM endpoints over the internet, provided any intermediate devices like firewalls or proxies have whitelisted the SSM service endpoint URLs for that region. For managed nodes that do not have a direct internet access, there are two options that can be configured. Firstly, if your managed node is an EC2 instance, you can have the EC2 instance communicate over the NAT gateway outbound to the SSM service endpoints. Alternatively, if the instance is in a subnet with no outbound connectivity to the internet, then interface VPC endpoints powered by AWS private link can be configured to enable that communication. An interface endpoint needs to be created for each SSM service endpoint. So altogether, you will have three SSM service endpoints to work with. Likewise, a machine outside of the AWS environment can still privately connect to the SSM's VPC interface endpoints via Direct Connect or VPN connection. When using the interface VPC endpoints, all communication will happen within the AWS global network. Thus, through all these different network options, we can see how a managed node is able to communicate with AWS Systems Manager service, whether the managed node resides in a public network or a private network. Thanks for watching, and I hope you get started managing your resources with AWS Systems Manager today. For more such content, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to Unmask It Now. See you next time.